So could this quite possibly be the best gaming phone that you can get for the price? It's the Black Shark 4 with some very good specs on offer here, some blazing fast, crazy charging speeds. So just 20 minutes with 120 watt charging for a 4,500 milliamp hour battery is really impressive. This is all powered, this phone, by the Snapdragon 870. Now it has a 48 megapixel camera, main camera on the back, eight megapixel ultra wide, five megapixel macro, and also a 20 megapixel front facing camera. And in my time testing it out, this phone is really impressive in terms of its gaming performance, but it also has these hardware pop-out triggers, which do add another level to your gameplay, especially with titles like PUBG, which I'll be testing out in this in-depth review. Quick look first at what we get inside the box. So we get some Black Shark stickers, and there is a case that they include. This is a hard case, and it doesn't offer a lot of protection, just the corners really and the back of it because it's all open here. Now that is for the side fingerprint reader, but also for the gaming triggers. There is like a warranty card thing and whatnot, but that is in Chinese. And here is our cable. So this is a thicker gauge cable, this one, because it is 120 watt charging, which they claim should fully charge the phone, the 4,500 milliamp hour battery in just 17 minutes. But in my testing, it's 20 minutes, which is still excellent. And there is the charger. This one has the two prong uh, Chinese or US style with this, but it's great to have such a powerful charger and just an insane charging time of 20 minutes is amazing. Build quality of this one is quite good. It is a heavy phone though, 211 grams and it's 11 millimeters thick. So right there we have the SIM tray, which takes two nano SIMs, no micro SD card support, unfortunately, two antenna lines. Here we have the volume up and down button and it's all middle of the frame around the outside. Along the bottom here, we have a Type-C port 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Quality out of this is very good. And yes, this Type-C port does support video out. All it does is just clone the display, but it's great to have on a gaming phone. I think a lot of people will end up using this. Microphone, loudspeaker here, another antenna line, and we have the triggers. So these triggers here, just flick the switch and they pop right up. They have about a millimeter of travel to them and they do feel very good. More of them later on when I get onto the gaming portion of this review, but they are great to have these hardware triggers so much better than the typical capacitive touch. So this fingerprint reader here is capacitive, always on, doubles as our power button too. And I'll just demonstrate that tapping that, that it unlocks really quick. And for me, this has been a 10 out of 10 fingerprint reader. It just works so well every single time and unlocks really quick. So here we have the earpiece at the top and a ring around the front facing 20 megapixel camera, sadly. I don't like this trend, really wish they would stop that. And you can see that our bezels, they're not too bad with this and there is a little bit of a chin as you can see right there. So overall, build quality is good. And you'll see that we've got the logo there on the back with the S and if you move it around a little bit, that it does reflect a little bit the pattern there. Now, a very nice screen in this one, 6.67 inches, full HD+, and the refresh rate is up to 144 hertz. For some reason, it's saying 120 here. Now, brightness, I have measured up to 800 nits, but it can do a peak of 1300 nits, so it's very, very bright, and it's just super responsive. All in all, a excellent display here, and it's flat, of course, no curvature to it, which is really what I do like to see with these screens. So just quickly show you here, just a few little test images, that it is an excellent display. And the blacks right there, even though it just stated green colors, that's blacks, very, very deep. And then the whites here are uniformed. You're not gonna see any dark patches around the cutout or around the edges because it is a super AMOLED screen here that they've gone with. So in the settings for the display, we do have a lot of options. You've got the ultimate refresh rate, which is the 144 hertz or 90, which is a good blend of battery life and smoothness. I would probably actually use that one myself. 60 if you want to save on your battery life, of course. And great that we do have this anti-flicker mode. So DC dimming, that is there. It works on all of the refresh rates. So not just limited to say 60 hertz, which it was with some phones in the past from Xiaomi. It isn't here, dark mode. You've got your reading mode and everything like that as you expect and your color scheme. You can adjust the white balance, the color saturation. It is all there. 
So this phone runs Joy UI 12.5, which is basically MIUI 12.5. It's just skin slightly different for the Black Shark phones. Android 11, I'm on the latest firmware. There have been quite a few little tiny updates that have been coming through. Now, performance-wise, everything is super quick on this. Very, very smooth and fluid. 144 frames per sec in the UI. Task Manager kills things off a little bit. I haven't had any problems with the signal quality, strength, and placing calls Anything like that has been actually really good. I'm currently on 5G and that does seem to be working quite well. So very good performance wise. Gestures all just work so well and really no complaints there. No micro stutter. The only thing I have seen is a bit of what I would call unoptimized battery drain that's happening with it in 5G mode. You lose about 10% overnight of standby drain and I hope that they can tighten down on that black shark and improve upon that. So here's the battery life. This is my typical test I do. Displays calibrated to 200 nits of brightness and it ran from 100% down to 20%, seven hours and 51 minutes at 144 hertz. So it takes a huge toll on the battery. So you're only looking at about six, five to six hours of screen on time realistically with the 144 hertz option. And then if you set it to 90 hertz, which I did here just to test out on the battery life, that then becomes about seven to eight hours of on-screen time. So a lot better. I, that's why I would run 90 hertz myself personally with this one. And here you can see the charge time. So just ignore this 45%. This doesn't actually report and work with the fast charging, okay? Fast charging completely throws it off. So it thinks the battery's only got a capacity of 2000 milliamp hours, which is completely incorrect here. So really quick, two, percent to 100 percent in a blazing crazy fast 20 minutes the phone does get quite warm as a result it gets up to about 45 degrees and the charger does also get about up to 48 degrees so it does get a little warm there the internal storage is very very quick here so we have ufs 3.1 storage 128 gigabytes that i have with this model here Excellent random reads and writes. You can just zoom in there for you. You can see that that is not going to be holding up this phone at all. And that's another reason why everything just feels so quick on this particular model. So there is our Antutu score. Really good. This is Antutu version 8.5. I haven't got the latest version 9 because I have some validation error when I tried to use it. And the scores also seem quite a bit higher, around 600,000 with that, with that one. So that's why I use this. So really good score. You can see GPU performance there. Very, very good there. Wireless speeds are excellent. So up to almost 1,000 megabits per second, but it's 900 or so it will cap out on my Wi-Fi uh, 5 network. Sorry, Wi-Fi 6 this is, and it's really good. So Wi-Fi 6 support and good strength, good range, reception. Same with 5G and 4G, not a problem. GPS works well with a very good average signal strength here of 35 in the green, it will see a lot of satellites, even though here at the time it was only locked on to eight. Accuracy will not be any better than three meters. Camera to API support is the maximum level three. So look for Gcam ports if you did want them, of course. And sadly, a security level three here for this one, even though the firmware updates have been coming through, None of them have patched and corrected this. So I do hope we get a security level one later on so you can actually look at Netflix and Amazon Prime Video and things in full HD, not just standard definition, which looks quite blurry and not exactly great to me. So they do have the Game Lobby, which is their shark space, and that's a separate app, which is really a gaming hub. That's what it is. It simplifies things. You can have all your games in one place, custom options and settings, and everything like that that you can go through. So do not disturb modes, all of that. You can record the gaming footage. There's a lot on offer here that we do see now with a lot also of other gaming phones. They have the similar features there. You've got your manual recordings. You can start doing that, screen capturing what you're doing, recording that. And there are configuration settings there too for using the triggers, which I'll get onto soon. So you can see your games are in here and you can select them just through this. And it does a bit of a performance optimization when you launch them. And what it does is just clear out anything in the background, the memory, and that will help, in theory, boost the performance. So I'll take a look now at some PUBG gaming on this and just how it performs. If you set it to the smooth graphics option here, you get 90 frames per second, which I think most players will probably do this. So the above settings then just brings down that frame rate to the extreme, which is I think extreme, what's that? 60 frames per second. And you do have the UHD. Well, you can download the ultra 
HD textures. But because I want to run smooth here, I want the 90 frames per second, I'm going to play the game on that. To configure the triggers, all you need to do is then swipe once you're in a game, you can swipe there from the sides and you get the gaming menu here. You can see 90 frames per second and normally it's a solid 90 frames per second the whole time with this one. And there's different options in there. You can set up macros. You've got your different blocking there for your do not disturbs. You've even got an anti miss touch. So it tries to get rid of the accidental touches. Game config, and it's this one right here where you can move around and configure the triggers. So you've got the A and the B triggers, and you just simply move them to where you want. So if I want B to be fire, and then the other one to look down the scope, then you simply just have to move them to that place there. So this performance is great. It is really, really good. It's just a constant 90 frames per second. We do have the Snapdragon 870, and that is a very powerful processor. And it's almost just as good as the Snapdragon 888, pretty much. And when the 888 starts to get a little hot, you'll find it will probably be about the same level of performance as this one. Whoa, 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 whoa. See how much easier that was with the triggers. That was an actual plan, not a bot there. So very easy just to tap the trigger to aim. And I do find it, it's so much quicker and just easier than touch. And my reaction times are quite poor now. But that was pretty good for me. So you simply just tap there to look down the site and fire. And that's why the triggers there are really, really good here. So performance, I'll just take another look at that. 90 frames per second. It only varies by just a few frames per second. All the time, every time I've been checking it, it's always been at the solid 90 there. So great performance, especially for PUBG gamers out there, Call of Duty, all those kind of titles, I think really do suit the triggers, the trigger setup and the fact that you can just aim and fire so quick. That's what I would have it set to, but you can set it to whatever you want on any game. It could be something else. And I'll check out now Genshin Impact. I will play that one and we'll see how it performs. So performance of this one is surprisingly good because I have set it to the maximum settings. So that is highest and 60 frames per second. So when I swipe here, you see 60. Now it's not a constant continual 60 frames per second. I have noticed that there are a few frame dips now and then, depending on what's going on. You've got a few enemies and attacks. Now the triggers at the top, you can configure them. Of course, it saves it per game. So what I've done is set one here to be my spell and the other one on the left. That is my attack, and that seems to work all right. Now you could set it to whatever you want. So what it's doing is just emulating one of the touch controls here. I could set it to jump, I could set it to swap over to different characters, uh, whatever you want to do. So that is great that we've got that level of customization there with the triggers. And it's more for your, I think, your FPS game. So your first person shooters like Call of Duty and PUBG, I think those triggers are really suited for that, but it's still handy with this one. Let's just look around here, there's a lot to render and this is on the highest settings and it is doing a really really good job here and this is so smooth I can't believe how smooth this is really good so have a look again and yeah it seems to just be a constant 60 frames per second with this and considering how demanding this game is that's really good to see so what I will do now is game for one hour Genshin Impact and I'll report back on just how hot is the phone going to get Okay, so let's have a look at the temperatures. The good news is that it hasn't had any problems with the screen dimming, but the bad news is, well, it's up to 51 degrees, almost 52, I think it touched on, which is, that's getting way too hot. And looking at the back here where the chipset is, that's 52 degrees as well. And this is after one hour of Genshin Impact at the maximum setting, so I would run it on lower settings to stop the phone from getting so hot. So the two loudspeakers on this one are quite immersive. They're loud, they have a hint of bass, and the 3.5 millimeter out does sound very good to my ears. It's clean, it's loud, and really no complaints at all. So here's a sample at 100% volume. Oh, and the call quality too is very good with this phone, no problems. Over to our cameras now. So with this front-facing camera, we can only shoot 1080p and it does not have any electronic image stabilization as you can see. So it looks sharp, the quality is good, 320 kilobits per second audio, but as I walk ahead, it shakes around all over the place. So really, they do need to add the electronic image stabilization. I hope with a firmware update that Black Shark can do this. Here we are with a 4K video on the rear 48 megapixel camera with an f1.8 aperture. As you can see, there is 
No electronic image stabilization, sadly. Now they could have certainly add this in a future firmware update, but perhaps they don't because they don't want the video quality here to compete with some of their other phones or simply because they just think that gamers don't need electronic image stabilization with 4K footage. But the good news is that if you shoot in 1080p, both 30 frames per second and 60, which this is at, is at the moment, we have electronic image stabilization that does work relatively good, steading out the image, of course, and just jogging ahead a little bit. You can see that it does a reasonably good job. But remember that this 48 megapixel sensor does not have any optical image stabilization with it at all. One thing to point out too, that the bitrate with this one here, with both 1080p, 60 and 30 is exactly the same, even though 60 frames per second is capturing double the amount of information. So for the price that this sells for, which is around about 350 or under 400 euros, I think it is really good and probably one of the best gaming phones at the moment. Those hardware triggers, they aren't really a gimmick at all. They do add to your gameplay and it's so much quicker as you probably saw there with my reaction speed, which is not really that great. I was still able to aim and then fire in PUBG there so quick thanks to those triggers there. And with other titles, you can certainly still use them to assign whatever on-screen control to those two hardware triggers, which is great. So the performance, even though the phone does get, yes, it does get too hot really playing a game like Genshin Impact, it got up to 52 degrees, which is quite uncomfortable. The metal frame around the outside when I was holding it, and yeah, this is getting really, really hot. It didn't show any sign of throttling at all. The screen did not dim down. It didn't screen throttle, as I call it, and it maintained a 60 frames per second solid the whole time. Well, it may have dipped down just occasionally there, but really impressive performance out of the Snapdragon 870. And then of course the charging speed on this phone is just crazy, crazy fast. Very, very good. And it has a solid build quality and a really good screen. It's super bright, very responsive, and that impressive 144 Hertz. So the areas of improvement, definitely with software updates, hopefully we're gonna see out of Xiaomi is that they can fix the cameras on this for video performance. So at the time of this video, there is no electronic image stabilization on the rear cameras, on the front camera, and they really do need to add that. I think it's just being overlooked, and I do hope that a firmware update would add the electronic image stabilization support. The other is the wide vine level three cert. So that means we're not gonna have Netflix in full HD, sadly it is going to just be in standard definition until they can correct that, which I believe this will definitely come later on in a firmware update. So really the only bad thing for me is that it does get very, very hot with the most demanding games. So for a game like Genshin Impact, if I'm gonna play for an hour or two hours, I would definitely lower the settings down, not run it on the highest visuals, even though it can do it, or I might, it might actually lower the frame rate from 60 down to 30 just to stop it from getting hot. If you do that, and it's only about 45 degrees is what it will get up to. So thank you so much for watching my review here of probably the best gaming phone so far that I've reviewed for the price, the Black Shark 4.